Hello, welcome back to Too Sweet MTG, and welcome to Instant Deck Techs. In this series, we go over everything you need to build a certain commander. We'll go over the strategies and the types of cards needed you need to get the deck working. Any cards we mention will be down in the description below. In this video, we're going to be looking at the Yete, Isu the Abominable. It is 3 blue blue for a 5 5 legendary snow creature Yeti. It has, you may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may also play snow lands and cast snow spells from the top of your library. Whenever another snow permanent enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay green, white or blue. If you do, put a plus one plus one counter on Isu the Abominable. So they finally gave us a legendary yeti, and what's nice is that bottom ability means that this is a banned commander. With all that, this is going to be a snow matters deck with a landfall sub theme. Snowfall, if you will. Isu is basically a copy of Future Sight that sits in the command zone. This is insanely strong as a card draw engine. With the right setup, we could be playing multiple spells a turn off of it. The downside, as it were, is that the cards you're playing off the top of your library have to be snow cards. While this narrows down what we want to play a little bit, there's one part of the deck that this won't affect anywhere near as much, and that is our lands. This is why there will be a landfall sub theme in the deck. We'll be combining Isu with cards that let us play multiple lands per turn. This serves two purposes. It obviously ramps us ahead so we can cast more and more spells from the top of our library, but it also negates the main sticking points of effects like these, and that is when you get lands stuck on the top of your library that you can't do anything with. Worth also mentioning, the plus one counter ability on Isu is a nice little backup win condition. We can use any spare mana to make Isu get really big, and then start hitting face with it. First up is our ramp section. This is going to be fairly beefy compared to a normal deck. First up, we have some ramp on snow permanents. They might not synergize with the landfall theme, but being able to play these off the top of our library is just too good to not include them. They'll still do a really good job at making us some mana when we need them to. Then we have Into the North, which is another spell that we can cast on the top of our library if we want to. This can go and get any snow land from our deck. That can be a basic, or some of our snow jewels, or even something a little bit more scary. Then we have effects that display multiple lands per turn. Remember, these can be from our hand, or importantly, from the top of our library as well. On screen here are probably the best ones that we can run. Exploration is a classic, but it is a little pricey. You have Druid class, which is less efficient, but in Commander where we have time to get it to level 2, it is a great budget option. Azusa Lost But Seeking is the most impactful out of all of them. You then have Dryad of the Elysian Grove, which has great added utility by letting it fix us. Wayward Swordtooth is a solid beta when it comes down to it. You also have Oracle of Modaya, which is some nice redundancy for our commander as well. And then you have AEC, which we'll be mentioning again in our card draw section. Next up we have effects that are still good, but aren't as efficient as the last group. Enter the Unknown, Azusa's Many Journeys, and Summer Bloom are all great one-time effects that let's put some extra lands into play. You then have Rites of Flourishing and Gear Poor Ori. These let everyone, including our opponents, play more lands. We'll still get more use out of them than our opponents, and like everything on this page, are really good budget options. Moving over to our card draw now, and although our commander itself does give us card advantage, having more options and things to do will always be a good thing. First up, we have some snow permanents that can draw us cards. Arkham's Astroblade and Ice Fan Quattle come in and replace themselves with another card. The Astrolabe is a great little mana fixer, and then the Quattle is a really annoying blocker that can also double up as a removal spell if timed correctly. You then have Ascendant Spirit, which can level up to be a 6-6 Angel that draws a card when it hits. You can actually activate their bottom ability more than once if you want to keep buffing it up and draw more cards when it hits. Orhan Viper is another great snow creature that draws us cards when it deals combat damage to a player, which again shouldn't be an issue with its pseudo death touch. In a similar vein, you have Oran Frostfang. This makes all of our creatures draw us a card whenever they deal combat damage, and fantastically it's also a snow creature, so it seems a slam dunk in the deck. You also have Frost Augur and Pilfering Hawk perfectly fine creatures that can change the top card of our library to let us play something else if we need to. Then we have Blessing of Frost and Graven Law. Blessing of Frost is a pump spell for our whole board, that can also draw us a couple of cards for each creature we have with power, four or more. Then Graven Law lets us set up the top of our library, and also lets us draw three cards, which is a very strong effect. Then we have some spells that draw us cards, while also letting us put more lands into play. You have things like Explore, Growth Spiral, Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, Eureka Moment, and Urban Evolution. These will do a great bit of double duty, and will have us churning through our deck in no time. Next up we have some spells that draw us even more cards when lands come into play. While you do have to pay 2 mana for Seer's Sundial, it's still a pretty solid card. You then have Tatiova, and again Aisi, which just do it for free, and are absolutely fantastic. Then lastly, I'm going to mention two cards that help us fix the top of our library. You have Soothsaying and Scroll Rack. While these don't directly draw us cards, they do let us manipulate the top of our library, so that we can cast something off of that. This is effectively card draw, as it's giving access to more cards. Moving over to our interaction section, and we have a plethora of awesome options to go over. First up we have some removal on snow permanents. We have Gelid Shackles, which is like a snow pacifism effect. You also have On Thin Ice, which is one mana for an Oblivion Ring effect. Then we also have Winter's Rest, which can pretty much tap down a creature permanently. 
We then have Blizzard Brawl, which in this deck will very easily be a one-sided fight with our beefy yeti commander piling in. Then we move on to some of the most efficient bits of interaction in all of Magic. You have Path to Exile and Swords to Plowshares, which are just the best at what they do. One white, creature gone. Absolutely perfect. Then for a bit more mana, you have Beast Within and Generous Gift, which can answer absolutely anything. That flexibility is worth the extra cost. And then because we have the access to white, we have some of the best board wipes that we can play as well. There really is just plenty of options out here to suit anyone's build and anyone's budget. I personally quite like Time Wipe in this deck as a way of saving our commander. Talking of that commander, because it's basically an engine that keeps the deck going, having some protection to keep it around will be very important. First up we have Blizzard Strix. This is importantly here as it is a snow permanent that we can play off the top of our library at any point with its flash ability. What it does is flicker our commander if anyone ever tries to remove it. Then we have some more standard fare with Lightning Greaves and Swiftfoot Boots, as solid an option in this deck as any that revolves around the commander. Then you have cards like Heroic Intervention that at a pinch not only protect our commander but our whole board as well. And then because we have access to blue, you can also look at running some counter magic if you think your playgroup is a little more trigger happy with its removal. Ok, let's move on to some cool ways of actually winning the game. First up we have effects that make us creatures whenever a land comes into play. With all the effects that let us play extra lands in a turn, combined with the card draw engine of our commander, these will make us an absolutely obscene board state in no time at all. We then also have a card like Morit of the Frost, which can either be a second copy of a Rampaging Balos or an Avenger of Zendikar, for even more token making fun. It could even be an Icebreaker Kraken, which in this deck could very easily just be an 8-8 for 2 mana. Its ability we could easily get to use again and again, as we could feasibly be playing 3 lands a turn in this deck, so we can repeatedly be tapping down an opponent's board. Another strong card in this deck is a Darker Valkyrie. This basically turns any removal into a theft effect, which could be really strong and lets us turn our opponent's best cards against them. And then we probably have the most well known snow base finisher of all, Dark Deaths combined with Thespian Stage. With these you can make yourself a 2020 squiddly eldritch horror and go to town on your opponent's life totals. A newer way of making that flying beta is with Marit Lage's Slumber. In this deck we could just easily be making this on turn 4 or 5, which is a very scary prospect. For some haymaker fun we then have Genesis Wave. Stick all the mana in the world into this and pop off like a madman. With all the ramp that we'll be playing, this could just win us the game on the spot. Another cool card in this deck that we can run because of how it's built is Diamond Fairy. With all the mana we have, we could drop this and then our unassuming snow creatures become lethal threats. And remember, for a backup win condition, we do have our commander. Whenever we have spare mana, we can just be using it to make Isu get bigger and bigger. Slap a Rancor or a Loxon Warhammer on that lad, and it'll be lights out for your opponents before they even know what hit them. Rounding off the deck with some utility lands, I personally wouldn't want to run too many in this deck as we do need that density of snow lands to be as high as possible to make the deck actually function. That would mean I would personally only be looking at running these three. Faceless Haven is a really nice little man land that can attack or block as we need it to. Scrying Sheets lets us move something from the top of our library into our hand, like a land for example if we don't have something like an exploration out. Then Mouth of Ronum is just a free bit of removal that this deck gets to run, which is pretty nice. The rest of your mana base will be very dependent on what you have available to you. We recently released a video with some advice on building a deck with a budget mana base which might be of help. Until next time, please like, share and subscribe and let us know down in the comments if there are any commanders you'd like to see a deck tech on. Thank you very much for watching.